सो वंस अगेन शिक्षा मंत्रा वेलकम्स यू टू अनदर न्यू प्रेजेंटेशन एंड दैट्स आल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वन फॉर योर लर्निंग ऑफ इंग्लिश ग्रामर व्हाई टू से इंग्लिश ग्रामर ब्रदर इट्स बेटर टू से फॉर योर लर्निंग ऑफ इंग्लिश वर्ड्स yes dear friends today we are going to discuss something very much important and you must know this fact you must learn them very closely and very neatly so that you can flourish in your english grammar so let's discover what's the topic we have today yes dear friends the topic is anomalous verbs anomalous verbs these are really some very important verbs to learn and we must consider these verbs well so let's begin our discussion of anomalous verbs so the first topic with which we would start our discussion is what is it what is anomalous verb as you can find that the very name anomalous suggests that there is some anomaly in it so what anomaly the term anomalous finites that's how it has been uh, described in different grammar books and uh, sometimes it's also uh, termed as anomalous verbs but we must remember that these are finites and they are 24 in number so they are a group of 24 finite verbs which we term as anomalous verbs and what are they yes dear friends they are the be verbs like is am are was were this also has have had and also do does did and there's a long list will would shall should can could may might must ought need did used so this is the list of the 24 verbs which which verbs are termed as anomalous now if you closely look at this list you would find both the present and the past forms here so from this from this list of 24 finite verbs our story of anomalous verbs begins so let's discover what more waiting here for anomalous finites in this presentation and the first point as you can probably see all these verbs those 24 verbs they are all auxiliary verbs so anomalous finites are auxiliary verbs they are used as auxiliary verbs it's very important next point some of them are also principal verbs yes dear friends if you remember the list of those 24 finite verbs their be verbs have verbs do verbs can be used both as principal as well as auxiliary so they can be used as both auxiliary verbs and principal verbs so these are the characteristics of anomalous finites and these are very much important these are so so very important that you have to remember them you have to remember them quite clearly so that in future you won't find any difficulty with them so there comes our third point as auxiliaries their function is to help principal verbs to form their tenses and moods yes dear friends we have already discussed it where probably you have remembered yes in modal auxiliaries they form tenses they forms moods so all these tasks are being performed by anomalous finites this other point as anomalous finites they have other functions we we'll discuss it what other functions are there for those anomalous finites but for this you have to stay glued to this presentation till the end and you'd find out everything so there comes first of the points in our discussion anomalous finites are irregular they do not form the past tense by the addition of ed d t but what happens how do they change their form 
Yes, dear friends, they change their form by changing in the root vowel. If we follow do, what happens here? To make it past, you would say did. For uh, B verbs, am, is, are, you would say was or were. So, most of the time, they don't, every time actually, they uh, don't accept ed or d or t after them. Rather, they change the form. They change the verb itself. The root vowel gets changed. That's the important characteristics of the anomalous finites. Then comes some other anomalous finites like must and ought. They don't have any past form. You won't find any past forms for them. And there's also some other like used for which you don't find any present form. Yes, dear friends, these are the anomalous finites. These are the auxiliaries as well as principles and they behave so very differently. Would uh, go to that point later in this presentation, but let's begin it with some very interesting factors. So what are the anomalous verbs? What are the anomalous finites? Finally, we are going to reveal this. These irregular finite verbs are very different from other finite verbs in many respects. And hence, they are called anomalous finites. They are different from other verbs. That's why there's anomaly that's why they are considered anomalous finites. Yes, dear friends, here actually in this presentation, we are going to learn a lot about anomalous verbs or anomalous finites like the functions that they perform. So function is such a very important thing for any English grammar term that I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to go after the functions, to learn them properly, to remember them well, so that you can grab English grammar just as well as possible. So let's begin. These have many functions. The first thing that we must uh, consider here that they can be placed in two classes. Yes, dear friends, they have also classes, but there are two major classes that we we'll discuss here. And the first of them, they are important as structural verbs used to operate the negative and the interrogatives. Just remember these points. Listen to them quite clearly. The first function, these are structural verbs. So anomalous finites have a close association with structures. And also which structures we have discussed of two distinct things. First is negative and the second is interrogatives. So then comes our next point. They are also used to form moods for which English has no inflected forms. So how they do this? Used in this way, they are termed as modal verbs or modal auxiliaries. So probably you have got the term moods, they form modal verbs or modal auxiliaries and they are also anomalous verbs. Yes, dear friends, they correspond to mode or mood. This is another very important thing to learn about English grammar. You must have a clear concept of mood if you uh, have not checked it. Obviously, we have a presentation on this and the link is given on the i button above check it just go through the video learn it properly and you'd uh, learn anomalous finites to a new depth a new light you'd get over anomalous finites so check that i button and find this verb definitely so then comes functions of anomalous finites we now we we'll discuss about how they are used. So they are used for the following functions. What are they? The first is the formation of the negative. We have already discussed it. How negative is formed, you know it quite well. So I am to discuss it here. 
Now, probably it would be discussed in some other uh, parts if you needed, if you really need a discussion of the formation of negative, do uh, tell me in the comment section below. I think uh, you don't need much detailed dis discussion on the formation of negative. Then comes the formation of the interrogative. This is also very much important, but we know it, you know it quite well, how to form interrogative sentences. But when you form interrogative sentences, anomalous finites, they play a very vital role there. And the third is the formation of the interrogative negative. So if you consider that you'd find that third rules is actually a summation of the first and second. So here you form negative, then you form interrogative and together you form interrogative negative. So that's how anomalous finds nights are used in the functions that we have for them. The most striking difference between them is uh, quite like this. How? The most obvious difference between anomalous finites and other finites is that they can be used with the contraction n apostrophe t, which is the shortened form of not. So how it is? It isn't true. That means it is not true. Then we aren't going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. Then comes you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do that then uh, I don't know what to do. So here, when you come to these uh, finite verbs, that means those anomalous finites, they would accept in apostrophe T form. But you can do this with other finite verbs. How? Suppose if you uh, consider um, that uh, play, let's uh, take the word play. So I play cricket. You can't say, I play not cricket, I plant cricket. You can't do this. Rather, you have to say, I don't play cricket. So, whenever an apostrophe T is needed, there you must put what? Anomalous finites. Other finites can't accept not. Only the anomalous finites can. So, that's our point. And now, we'd learn the use of anomalous finites yes dear friends this is also very much important but for this just look at this sentence i haven't paid for the ride so that's the sentence i haven't paid for the ride then if you uh, find this have so here have this is actually an auxiliary verb because it helps to form present perfect of what Paid. So here the finite word and the anomalous finite together they have formed what? They have formed a verb phrase and have is used here as an auxiliary verb. Now as it has accepted in apostrophe t we can easily say that it's also anomalous. We could very easily say this by only looking at the sentence that i haven't that means have it's it has uh, accepted an apostrophe t that's why this is anomalous finites so to make negative sentences we also do the same thing in modern english you can't make a negative sentence by simply adding not to the positive sentence in fact only the anomalous finites can form their negatives by the simple adding of not when you simply add not with the anomalous verbs they become what they become negative but it's not possible for the other finites they can't accept an apostrophe t to form the negative forms then comes what a least a list of contracted forms of the anomalous finites plus not the uncontracted forms are also given in the brackets. I don't think uh, it's uh, pretty effective to discuss of them. Rather, you may pause and check out whatever is given here in the list. They are quite known to you. So let's sit to some next point. That's also very much important. Special verbs. Have you heard of this term before? If you have, it's good. But if you haven't, look at this quite quite keenly very intensely learn what is special verbs here four sentences are given he isn't reading 
Can't you swim? She has left, hasn't she? Mr. Brown will go abroad and so will his sister. So here we have given four sentences. Now we are going to discuss them one by one. In the first sentence, if we consider the verb is, it has combined with not. Then in the second sentence, if you consider can, it has make a question form by coming before the subject. Then if you consider the third sentence, she has left, hasn't she? So hasn't she? Here we have found a question tag. And if we consider the fourth sentence, Mr. Brown will go abroad and so will his sister. So uh, here the verb will, it has uh, formed a verbal group, will go. So now if you follow these verbs, they behave. Actually, these verbs that is uh, be, can, uh, has, well, these verbs and also there are some other verbs which behave in this way and they are called special verbs. Why? Because they behave in a peculiar or a special way. So that's what we call special verbs. So there comes anomalous verbs. They are used to avoid repetition. So avoidance of repetition is possible with anomalous verbs. But how? These verbs are used to provide short answers to questions and are pretty effective in avoidance of repetition. Suppose you have been asked, are we going to watch the movie? Your answer would be yes, I am or no, I am not. So uh, they actually avoid what? They avoid the repetition of the whole sentence, only yes and the verb. That's it. If uh, you find such a question, who brought these rugs? The answer would be Thesha did it. So these anomalous finites, they help what? In what? In avoidance of repetition. Yes, dear friends, that's it. There's more to discuss about anomalous verbs, but only on my next presentation. So to get a detail, to get anomalous verbs in more detail, you have to stay tuned to this channel. You have to like and subscribe. Shake your mantra. Stay with us. Grow with us. Let's grow and grow together. So that's all dear friends. Bye bye.